Here we are. Three years, almost four, three years later. Yes. Very excited. Hey, look, Jen Ruth. Hey. Yes. Good, Good morning. morning. Oh, this is great. This is great. I'm so excited. So open up our Bibles and let's get right into it. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have a special announcement. Special announcement, which this is really good for me and Brian, too, to hit it hard, get back on track, and really rock and roll. Yeah. We have the official, I, I don't even know what you want to call it, Brian, the reading the last chapter of the Bible celebration get-together party. It's a celebration. Yeah. I think so. I think that's good. That's a good way to put it. So we want everyone to literally buy plane tickets, mark the weekend, mark the date. It's official. I know that it's been a little bit ballpark with the Israel trip, and then obviously we're not going to Israel due to the war, and um, yeah, the date has always been a little bit of a ballpark date. But now we have an official date uh, that we are going to have it here, either at my house or right down the street in a convention center. That is part of my homeowners association. They have a beautiful um, uh, convention center. Is probably a wrong term. It's a uh, like a meeting room, ballroom. Um, uh, so either way, though, it's just right here. Uh, either way, Houston, so, Texas. Yeah, he, he, thank you, Houston, Texas. What's the date on that, Brian? Nice, give it to him, baby. <laughs> Right, Al. Hi. <laughs> July sixth. July sixth. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mark that on your calendar. Literally, plan your road trip. Buy your plane tickets that weekend. Um, you could either stay at my house. You can get a hotel. Whatever you would like. But we're gonna have a great time reading together, Revelation twenty-two, uh, chapter twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm just double checking. Um, there is an event. Mm. Oh, July twenty seventh. Just making sure. Team camp. Yes, thank you. Good, 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 good. Okay, we're good. All right, so there it is. So, so do we want to do the new countdown? Yeah, I got it going. One hundred and eight days. All right, there it is. Yeah. Okay, and look, the, the heat is on. By the way, the heat don't want is to on. That's word. It's not a race. It's not NASCAR. But me and Brian, we have, uh, and everybody listening, we have 108 days to get to Revelation 22. Yeah, and we have, what is it, 180 chapters. Yes. So, to go. So so I need you guys to hold us accountable, to push us. We're probably going to be banging out two a day, random does, times. Does that and, mean if we don't make it, it's their fault? Yes, we blame Jen Ruth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we can't. We, get, we, we don't blame her. No. Faultless. Uh, so probably... A little more hard reading than uh, us sometimes just uh, having long conversations. A man of God. Look at that. Yeah, coffee. just drinking coffee. Yeah, long conversation. Hey, we might have a couple uh, night sessions, by the way. We might, me and John might get on for a couple hours and just read, you know, 10 chapters. Yeah, why not? We'll see. Look, and look, we want, we want 100. We want July 6th. Of course, if we're not there... We'll have to figure it out, but that's the goal, right? July sixth, one hundred and eight days away to get through one hundred and eighty chapters. We're not. We're, we have faith. We believe mm -hmm. we can do it. We don't want to rush, and you know. But what's going to be good is Acts is pretty long, and it's it's also a, gr a long story. It's going to be a long story for him, so that's really good. Mm. And um, look, we can't we can't spend out you know weeks in revelation even though we love that book uh, we don't understand every part of it all the time nobody does so we don't have to spend eons of time on each line so i think we look you're saying there's a chance <laughs> yeah. you're telling me there's a chance <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well said Dad. so well, many quotes from that movie oh yeah with that said let's let's pray it in um i'll yeah. pray it in, if you don't mind come on uh, dear Jesus, thank you for bringing Jen Ruth here with us this morning. Thank you for uh, connecting me and Brian together on this journey uh, in, in your word and in weightlifting and in life and everything. Um, dear Jesus, thank you so much for the engagement uh, that you created between Brian Knight and mm -hmm. Jen. Um, that is so special. Thank you song for that. Song. Thank you for your word. Uh, second, second, yes, yes, yes. Song of <laughs> Solomon. 
Uh, Second Timothy three sixteen. We're so grateful for uh, the fact that you breathed your word through man from Genesis yes. one to Revelation twenty two. Mm-hmm. What a, a an amazing, what an amazing. I, I want to say accomplishment, but that's a weird thing to say to you, God, because uh, I have a gift. I want a gift. Yes, there you go. An accomplishment. I mean, Genesis one one. You created the heavens and the earth. Um, yes. You, you can write a book. Yes, you can split the Red Sea. Yes, you can give us eternal life. Yes, you can live with inside of us. Yes, you can be a godhead of three. It's possible. Yes. You know, yes, you can fit animals in a boat. Yes, you can love everyone. Yes, you, you, you are the I am. Amen. I am wraps it up perfectly. The burning bush, uh, John 858. Uh, you are the, what's the, um. Omega and the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Yes, that's you, Lord. That's Isaiah right there that you wrote yeah. um, through Isaiah, God, and and all and uh, and Jesus said the same thing in Revelation. Yeah, um, just like Exodus three fourteen and John eight fifty eight. I am, I am, Alpha and Omega. Boom, boom. We see it connect the the dove, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. We love you so much in Jesus' name, in Yahweh's name, in the Holy Spirit's name, in the Godhead's name. Amen. <laughs> Man, you are the Creator. Look, if you don't look, you can't say there's no Trinity. The same God, Jesus, spoke in Isaiah. Mm. The same God, Jesus, spoke in the Book of Revelation. Mm. He's the one who who was raised from the dead. Mm. So come at us. Oh, you, want- you got to understand when Jesus said, you know, I am the word, you know, Jesus is out of time. God is out of time. Of course, he's talking about Genesis 1, 1, Revelation 22, the Bible. But you got to remember, too, when Jesus said that the New Testament wasn't even written. Think of that for a second. Nope, not We're at all. Still in the Old Testament when Jesus said that because he has not said it is finished yet. So when God said, when Jesus said, John, I am the word, he is meaning I am the Old Testament. I am every word of the second Kings 22, eight. That's it right there. I'm everything. He's the one who walked with Abraham in the plains of Mamre, who said, I, I'm going to take down Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He's the one who stood in the, in the fire, John, when Abraham walked by and saw the burning bush, mm. right? He's the one who stood in the, in the, in the fiery furnace, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm. Praise the Lord. He is everything. And he's the one, John, who when you when you looked upon his word and you heard it with your, your ears and you believed it in your heart and you confessed him, he changed you and rekindled the flame of life inside your spirit. Mm. He is everything. Jesus. Oh, come on, Brian. Nash. no longer upon us, but in us. That's right forevermore death can't stop him nothing can stop him he's yes. unstoppable there's no devil in hell that can try to stop it there's no human on earth that can stop what jesus says does or is he is everything so you may think he's not real oh mm. but you're gravely mistaken i am that's it i am Let's the, get to it. all right john 15 by the way these two next chapters yeah. are just, these, this day, this little session here that we're about to read, mm-hmm. explosive. Hold on to these words. Look at uh, Jen Ruth here saying, excited about John 15. Let's go. Yeah, that's it. Let's get into it. You want to kick it off, Brian Nige? I will. Here we go. John 15. I am the vine. I am the true vine. Let's go. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear bear more fruit. Mm. That means he cleans us up. You know, this reminds me of when God once said the lionesses go out and fight and hunt. He didn't say lion. He said lionesses and lions. He put, God, he put ladies first. And it also goes to show me that man is woman and man. Yes. Look, Jesus says, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser, almost like lioness. Mm. We are, we are, it's, it's the same. Men and women are the same, but, of course, different. 
that might be a stretch, but I just kind of, sorry, I just, I feel that right now. It's interesting. That's all right. Feel it. For verse four, abide in me. That means live in me, dwell in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides or lives in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. This is huge. Like we have to live in Jesus Mm. and he lives in us. We have to live in his word. Mm -hmm. That's how we, it says you can't live unless you're living in him. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And it's true. Yeah. I also find too, that's the old Testament history, you know, from Genesis one, one to, to now that's the vine, baby. You can't vine. Vine. It doesn't make any sense. You can't get away from that, you know? No, he is the word all the way from the beginning till, till the end. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no difference. The old Testament is, even though it's, it had the, the, uh, the original covenant, Abrahamic covenant, it's still God's word. It's life. Mm. Remember Abraham, he, he, he was, uh, saved by faith. Mm -hmm. So same thing with us. Yeah. Let's yeah. See. What's your opinion, by the way? And I know we got to read. And <laughs> here we go. Here we go. But what's your opinion of humans even separating Old Testament versus New Testament? Even f- having it phrased like that, right? Godfather's one movie, one, two, and three. It's it's like, wouldn't it be just better to say not Old Testament and New Testament, more of this is the book of the Jesus Covenant? Um. Well, he did say a new covenant I give to you. Yeah. Jesus said that. The new we're in the new covenant. We're, we're in the new covenant. So testament is so we don't we it's a weird thing to hear testament nowadays, but that is the same thing as covenant. Oh, okay. It's basically the covenant. So old covenant, new covenant. It's the same thing. But we say testament because here's why. Jesus died and and testified to us what we get like the testament is when is like the it's the the testimony of the will of the the one who died so yeah. when like if grandma and grandpa died and leave something to you yeah that's in their will right same thing with us the new yeah. testament is the, his will to us i get it that's so, fast thank you brian that helps. yeah you're welcome i just don't know i just don't know if i love the old word old i mean old god's out of time it's not old it's not oh that's that old testament now, how about previous yeah <laughs> i like it too no i digress uh but yeah amen i get you uh six if anyone well, let's keep i think f- four i am the vine i five i am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and i in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing yeah, wow. look, look at that. that. Even the atheists that succeed, uh, you know, quote unquote, succeed in life, you know, um, that has yeah. been due to God. That is all glory to God, even if you don't believe in God. Hey, man, look, let's just exactly think about that. Let's just notice. Let's just give a big shout out to John North for big session today. He got chalk all over his <laughs> always chalk the neck. <laughs> I'm chalk. looking at him right now. Just got back. I smashed a protein shake, threw down a granola bar, and here we are. Let's go. So through, without Jesus, no one can do anything. That's right. Remember I say when, in, when in the rapture comes, which I believe in, or, or whatever, when, when, um, when Jesus is gone, when he removes the church, the, the peace is gone. Like mm-hmm. there's going to be a whole chaos of world. Here's baby. That's you it. know, and so apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Verse six, if anyone ab- does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned you see that in the luke story with yeah. the uh, man yeah go on yeah it didn't want to be uh on that side of the wall in, no way in hades or whatever you know i mean no. we don't deal with that now because we're in the middle time but no you want to be south of the wall i would rather be king david out in that abraham's bosom baby because we believe in christ yahweh we believe in god man we're not atheists <laughs> come on that's right no we're not we're north. We're not north of the wall. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. No, we are north of the wall back then. Yeah. The, the rich man was south of the yeah, wall. Yeah, he was. He was part burn of the here. I don't want to burn, and you don't want to burn either, man. Like if you haven't accepted Christ, Jesus, the whole the 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 
the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, accept Christ right now. Stop listening to religion and just be a man or a woman of God's word. John 1.1. 1, 1. Amen. That's it. Okay, let's keep reading. Seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Mm, Amen. Love. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be, and so prove, and so prove to be my disciples. Mm. So when you bear fruit, you prove that you are the disciples of Jesus. Mm. As as the Father has loved me, so I have so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Mm. And by the way, Will, we are believing for number four. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Yes, Will. These, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Notice that, John. Oh. Something that you can notice when, you, when someone's full of Jesus, and they love him, and they're right. abiding in him and living in him, you know that because, look, they have full, they're full of joy. Wow. They're full of joy. No, true. Really true, by the way. You notice the group that we hang out with. Yeah. The, the more, the more, the longer we go talking about the Lord, talking about his word, the more joy we have. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so you can see that that's one of those pieces of fruit that we produce. Verse 12, let's keep reading. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you, do, if you do what I command you, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. By the way, this is us, right? Mm -hmm. For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Wow. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So God calls us, Jesus calls us his friend. Mm. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Amen. That's why our church is called Friendship Church. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, Brian. And and you should love Jesus so much, it's almost as if you hate everybody in the world. That's how much you love Jesus. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's how, I mean, are we there? Ask yourself that. I mean, yes, Jesus said love everybody, but you should love Christ so much that you can't even, like, comprehend it. it's the difference. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're sold out to Jesus. What? Y'all are crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy for the Lord. Jesus. You've lost your mind. You're right. I've got the mind of Christ. But uh, we've lost our mind. You think nothing. You think everything came from nothing. What do you mean we lost our minds? You think that nothing created everything. Primordial soup, John. Of course it's real. <laughs> crazy person. What are you talking about? You have more faith than I do. You, don't you know the lightning hit the soup? No. Where'd the lightning come from? <laughs> Where'd the soup come from? <laughs> Yeah, uh, big bang guy. What well, well, before that? What well, before that? What well, before that? No, Brad did a whole thing on Sunday with that. It was fantastic. Look, Will's. This is Will's gonna. He's gonna harp on me on this one. Look at verse sixteen. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, should live. Well, so but, that. Well, that that's absolutely. Jesus chose us. That's why we're living on this planet right now. He put us in our mother's womb. Amen. Good us one. Be on this planet. He loves every one of us. Of course, he chose us, but it's also our free will to choose to accept it, to accept his gift. Do we, do we follow the cloud in the wilderness, or do we not follow the cloud in the wilderness? Come on, baby. That's choice. Wood on Sunday, or do we not pick up firewood on Sunday? Do we, do we, we say no to, no to, do we go with Naomi, or do we not go with Naomi? That's right. Come on, Ruth. Follow Ruth, along. Do you drink from your hands or do you not drink? From, well, that's more of just a battle. Do you scene. take the jawbone and kill them all, or you but walk away, or do you wimp out and say, oh, "I don't want to fight a thousand men with the donkey jawbone. I'm too scared." No, you scream out, "Let me die with the Philistine!" Yes, Dad, <laughs> ready to come home. That's hilarious, John. I love that you always think you always say that, Dad. I'm ready to come home. Let me do one more thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, so whatever. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. We ask for that fourth kid 
Mm. Yeah. The hog. Hogs. Mm. Jesus name. 17. These things I command you so that you will love one another. There it is. There's the commandment, by the Look, way. This, so you will love one another. The whole point is loving one another. Well, God, you know, I can't live the way God wants me. Why not? You got it's just to love one another. Mm-hmm. Verse 18. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Mm. If you were the world, if you were of the world, the world would love you as it as its own. But because you are not of the world. Big difference between the earth and the world that we see a lot too. That's right. The earth doesn't hate you, the world does. World does, right. But because you are not of the world, but I but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. See, 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 that's a huge line right there. See, look, but I chose you out, out of the world. I, the, the, the out of planet, of planet Earth. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. I chose you out of the world. I chose you before you were even in your mother's womb on Earth. I chose you in heaven. I chose you probably before Genesis 1 1 and put you in your mother's womb. Look, Come on I, now. It doesn't say I chose you when you were on planet Earth. I chose you when you were walking down the street at 15 years old. The Bible says in Ephesians that before the foundations of the world, he chose us to live with him and be holy. Now we now we need to accept it. Wow. The, be, the greatest line in the Bible is Genesis 0-0. That's right. When you were born, when you were in, we, when God knew you were real. Mm-hmm. Um, therefore the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name. That's the name of Jesus. Right. Yeah. They, they, if I go to some parts of the world with my my Bible verse tattoos in my arm, they're not going to chop my head off because they don't like me. It's not it's not they don't like John North. No, 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 no. Not personal at all. But they don't they don't like Jesus. Yeah. So they're going to cut my head off because of him, not me. That's the thing. It's the enemy attacking Christ, not yourself. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, this is a, a it's a great point here, Mr. Hawkinson. Why one of the reasons abortion is so bad. He chose you in the womb before you were ever ever born. Wow, that's see, that's so biblical right there. You know, you know God is so precious. Genesis zero zero, God made you, and then in let's say nineteen eighty six, He put me in Leslie G- Leslie Gass's stomach. Yeah, He was like, oh, I'm going to choose her for John. Right, exactly. Nineteen eighty six or whatever the math is, maybe like late nineteen eighty five. But my point <laughs> is, is that. That was God's will. He back chose to, me. He back, chose yeah. me to be in my mother's womb. It wasn't the free will of Leslie and David North having intercourse. Well, what I don't get it, John. Free will versus God's plan. The answer is yes. But yeah, he how many chose me? How many times, John, has a sperm and an egg come together and nothing happened? Many, 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 many times. But when they do come together and God says all right, it's time to send John down there. Mm. That's what happens. Life happens. You show up. That's right. He chose us. I love it. Remember the word that I said, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on the count of my name because they did not know him who sent me. Meaning they did not know God. They rejected God. Verse 22, if I had not come and spoke to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. By the way, he spoke, John, in the Old Testament. He spoke with the law. He spoke with his word also. Right. That's what right. he means here. Yeah. Clear as day. Yeah. Clear as day. He had a good point on, I forgot who mentioned it, but on the uh, men's group last night about the Tower of Babel, how important that was, because when everyone got spread out, either thrown in the air and around the world or migrated, whatever, yeah. which one. When, when everyone went around the world from Tower of Babel, probably one of the most important things of the Bible, um, everyone knew of Yahweh. Everyone knew of the great I Am. They yeah. were all together. From Noah. They were building a temple up to heaven. And 
like that's how much they knew God. It wasn't like they were just partying down. Like I have some different takes on why I think that some people had good hearts with it, and some people probably didn't go and trying to get up to heaven. Like, Let's go up to heaven. It's ridiculous, but you know we are flesh. But they all knew God enough to build a tower to try to get to him. You know what I mean? So when they got dispersed all around the world, and there's people now in Hawaii and Africa and China and in America, right? Everyone knew of Yahweh. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Hey, man. That, I don't want to take credit, but I will because it was me. Oh, Living it was right. in America. Eye to eye. Da, da, da. That's right. Hey, you're right. People were in America, John. Did you know this, by the way? <clears throat> it's a Native not- American. Check this out. They said Native Americans were the first people. Now, I might get heat on this. Go so I apologize. But this is just kind of like off the top of my head. Native Americans were the first people to discover America. Well, I would say nay. And I would obviously say nay to the Christopher Columbus, right? I'd say nay to both. What are you talking about, John? What do you mean nay to both? The, the argument is, no, Native Americans. No, no. The Jewish people were the first people to ever be in America. And then they turned into Native Americans over time. Tower of Babel. <laughs> What do you think about that, Brian? You think well, I would say I wouldn't call them Jews, but I would call them, pe- them people of God. Yeah. But weren't they of Noah? It, it... Yeah, but Noah wasn't a Jew, technically. He wasn't an Israelite. Oh, so, okay. Abraham was after Noah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's well, okay, though. But it's people of God, the people of the, the covenant. Israelites. Yeah. No. Absolutely. They so, Look, they Noah had made a covenant with God. Right. The people of the covenant. Is the Israelites discovered America first, and then they over time turned into Native Americans? Yeah, the Noahites, the Noahites. I mean, I'd love to get a Native American's opinion on that. You well, know, they, like, they wouldn't like that. Well, you, you don't I, think they, they're still Native Americans? They still turn. They still. You're talking about recurrent rate Native Americans. My family, my mom's side, is some Apache American, right? Tribe Apache from South Texas and Eastern. Western Texas, yeah. they would not say that it, the godly people from Noah were the first ones. I oh, doubt they would. And then where they come from? Then so so they would the say problem. the great the great spirits in the sky. They, it's all messed up. Here's the problem. Originally, yes, they believed this, but over time, and a lot of different things happen, and we we don't have to get onto it right here. But they begin to to seek out other spirits, other things other other things than God. And then they began to worship these false gods and these totem poles and these the, the ancient spirits and the oh, we're getting okay. I'm so just, that's the problem. I'm just sticking to the Bible. Amen. And you're right. I think originally where Babel happened, they could have God could have put nobody in America, but over time somewhere else the Native Americans were created and then they came to America first. Okay, okay then. Then then I'm wrong then. Then I'll get, then yes, the Native Americans did discover United States first. No, you're right, though. That's, I think you're right. But I believe in Tower of Babel, humans got spread all over. Amen. Hey, it was the, yeah, the people of God, those people. I am with you. I believe you're right. Whether just, they migrated or they were being beamed over, you're 100% right. The people of God from Noah and all his family, it was years and years of Noah's family, pre- produced and produced and produced. They are the ones who discovered America. North America, South America. I would agree with that. Even though I'm still going to say Native Americans are the native people of America, and they, I will still say they are the people that discovered America. But technically, if we want to dive into this fun rabbit hole from Tower of Babel, you, you could say that the, you could say because you could say every race, not just Native Americans, every people group once were Israelites. Yes, I, you kind of, yeah. I, I, I can't call them Israelites because they're not it, from Jacob, Israel, but they are from the line of Israel all the way up before Israel was. Because remember, it was, just be technicals, it was Israel after Noah. Noah, right? It was Noah and then the, the lineage of Noah, and then the Tower of Babel happened and everybody went around the world. Right. Then God said, okay, Abraham, I need you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So from the from the Abrahamic, from the the, the line, lineage of Noah, the people of God, the covenant people of God, because he made a covenant with Noah right after right. the flood. Right. Those people discovered America because they woke up one day and they were walking to it, or right. they just. You could even call those people Native Americans. Yeah. Even even when they, I don't know. We're getting way off track. It's we just are. 
topic. And, and not even just, I'm not, it's not just Native Americans, it's Africans, it's Chinese, it's everybody. Everyone. I'm just using that as an example because we live in America, that's all. Yeah, because there's an original people. People right. of God, the people of God. People of God. Anyway, so um, let's keep going. I love that. I love the conversation because it, it makes you people go, hmm, where did we come from? What is real? You know, because when you go to these deep conversations like this, it makes people think, oh, I'm not just from like Northern Ireland. Right. No one's from Northern Ireland. N Noah. It, <laughs> Noah. We're from Noah. And then before that, guess what? Adam yeah. and Eve. Exactly. Like literally, like I watched the Noah movie the other day with Russell Crowe and I'm like the whole time watching, I'm like, wow, that's like my grandpa. That's crazy. That's, I like it's it's a cool movie. I, I mean, it's weird. The Nephilim, you know, the Watchers. They were like rock men. I don't know if I believe that, but it was. It's a great movie. I, I like to. I like to watch it. it. Inspires me to be better. The bad guy on the ship. It's like the, yeah, cool. that was his son. <laughs> okay, let's keep reading. Verse twenty three, no twenty two. If I had not come and spoke to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me, hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. Mm. Verse 26, you want to slam dunk it? Yeah, 26, but when the helper comes. Who's that? It'll tell you. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Capital H, by the way. Interesting. Yeah. Whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth. There he is. It's from the Father. He will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So we, ooh, we have a little clue of what's next. The Helper. Wait, is that capital the H? Holy Ghost? Yeah. And the, look at that. Right, the, right, there. right there. The Spirit, capital S, the Spirit of Truth. And he will bear witness of Jesus. Oh, I see. You're right, because Christ hasn't died yet. He's saying right. that when I die, the helper will come. Exactly. Oh, wow. He says, I will send him from the Father. Yeah, and you so, also will bear witness because... For example of the Trinity, then, then verse 26. I mean, look at that. This whole... 20, that's what I was saying. 15, 16, boom. But you ready? Next chapter? You have time? Let me see. Let me see how long it is. Let's see. It's uh, if yeah, read, 33. If we, if we read it pretty hard and I stop talking about races around the world, I only have 12 minutes. Do it. Let's, all right. Let's focus in. Verse 16. Chapter 16. I mean, I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. God, that's happening right now. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father, nor me. We do. We know the Father. Amen. Exactly. Yeah, we've read every word of the Old Testament. Yeah, plus we know, we know him in our lives. We've yeah. had situations come up and he shows up. And mm. we call on him and we worship him and we love him. Yeah. Verse 4, but I have said these things to you. That when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Oh, and they did. The rich man in uh, hell. Yeah. Yeah, He's remember? Like, oh, he was always wrong. I was being told. I should have listened. Yeah. Can me out of this side. I want to go over there. Okay, fine. Can you tell my family? Like, oh, you made the decision, bro. He's like, they know. They have the law and the prophets. They, the family knows. Yeah. If they don't believe them, they're not going to believe you. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. That is the greatest line in the Bible right there. That, t that tells you, why did Jesus get ra uh, raptured up into heaven? Yeah, the helper. I've never seen this word before. He is the helper. Yeah, the comforter, the helper. The Holy Ghost is also the helper. Amen. 
out the helper and the blood. Yeah, notice it doesn't say Jesus is the one that's helping you. By the way, he is, but it doesn't say that. It's the helper. It's the it's the comforter, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is fascinating. And he's talking about, he's saying the helper, ha- I have to die for the helper to come inside of you. Exactly. Sleep, you know, and, and then all the people that are in Abraham's bosom right now, they're all just sitting there waiting for the helper to come to them as well. Christ has to die to get everyone up to heaven, King David and everybody, and for us in this middle time. Exactly. Yeah. It has to happen. It had to happen. That, I mean, like, we're going, where's the helper? I yeah. mean, I love Abraham's bosom. It's nice, but I'm ready for heaven. And the King James call, calls him the comforter as well, capital C. Either same thing. The helper, the comforter. Wow. He's our, yeah, the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. We have. Oof. That's why you need to receive him. That's why you, it's it's so important to receive him. It's a whole nother world. Okay, go, keep going. Here we go. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is it is your advantage that I go away. That if you do not come, if I if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Verse eight. Dude, this makes me want to just flip this table. Yeah, right now. I'm telling you, that's why life is so good. I have the best helper, the best comforter, the best counselor, the best. Everything in the Holy Spirit, because he re- remember it says that he bears witness of Jesus. He shows up, John, and he says, "He's real. He's your friend. He's your God. He's right. your companion." Mm. It's amazing. Verse eight: When he comes, the Helper, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me, Jesus. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father. And you will see me no longer Mm. concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Mm. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now when the spirit of truth, that's the helper comes, Mm. he will look at that. He will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but who, whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So he will show you things to come. He will tell you things to come. And he will tell you the things that he hears from Jesus. That's why people reject and yell and, and spit at Christians. Because we are saying the truth. Run from sin. Run from homosexuality. Run from adultery. Run from uh, lusts in your, in your life. Because abortion. that is the truth. Run from murder, abortion. Because we know it's the truth. It's the truth in you. And those people scream and cry, I want to sin. Yeah. They don't yeah. say it like that, but they say, get away from me, you hateful racist. And that's not true. I yeah. love you. So I'm telling you what I know is true. And you know it too. You just reject it. Why are you looking at me? I'm flesh. Why are you looking at me saying that's my opinion? Why are you looking at me? They're not going to kill me because of me. They're going to kill me because of Christ. So why are you coming at me about an opinion that's not even mine? Bing, yeah, bingo. Yeah. I just I just walk with Christ and I believe every word of the Bible. Come on. Yeah. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three sixteen. That's right. That's I right. live. Breathe that's the word. Next, that's the that's the next hat on my left arm. I already got the placement. I got the font. I'm ready to go. And so, Second Timothy three sixteen, right after John eight fifty eight, and of course the first one. Well, Luke sixteen twenty two is the first one because I thought it bridged the first the right arm to the left arm nicely from that story. And then of course I had to go Romans ten nine and ten on him. I had to go Romans ten nine and ten on him, Brian Knight. John, love John. You have your own salvation path on your arms. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, it's the, a story. The next tattoo's got to be said. Has to be Second Timothy three sixteen. Well, tell us what it is. That, that it's God's breathed word. Yes, and so, the Bible is God's breathed word. Every word of the Bible, and if you believe in the Bible, the Helper will guide you. Come on, baby. come on, baby. That is gold right there. That is gold. If, say that again. If you believe in God's word, the Helper will guide you. And he will show you things to come. Man. Look at 14. He will glorify me. Talking about Jesus. He will glorify Jesus. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Look at that. 
Look at that. A little while and you will see me no longer. And then again, a little while and you will see me. Oh, you'll see him on a white horse. Oh, yeah. He's coming now, maybe. So yeah. some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us a little while and you will not see me? And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the father. 18, he says, so they were saying a little while. We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew. Go ahead. He went, he... He's, he's talking to two different people. He's talking to the people that are alive next to him right now. That, that they will see him in heaven. You will see me in heaven. Right? And could, he's all talking to us right now. You will see me in heaven. Could, yeah, it could mean all that. Exactly. Yeah. It could mean several, all, all, all of that stuff. I, it, also, I, it also feels like it means like you won't see me because I'm going to heaven and you're going to stay here. Yeah. And then you will see me either in heaven or when I come back down. Or, or that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I said I, that's what I meant to say. You're yeah. either going to see me in heaven or because God, remember, Jesus was writing the Bible when he's talking. Right. So like he knows that someone in like, two, let's say 2029 is going to be reading this. He's talking to, you know, me in 2029. Let's say I'm still alive, hopefully. Yeah. God will, that I will see Jesus. Well, no, actually, I wouldn't, right, Brian? Because we'd be raptured before the we ride on the horse. Maybe we're not, we're not going to see Jesus coming down on the horse, right? Because we'd be raptured before then. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, exactly. So we would be with him, right? Okay. Yeah. So, you, you know, which I believe the the Bible talk, teaches the rapture of the church before the tribulation. Some people don't. That's okay. Stay here. It's fine. Um. But yeah. Exactly. So either we see him in heaven. When we're raptured, or we see him when we die and go to heaven, or we see him when he shows back up. Either way. Yeah. 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 But probably not the show back up because that's, I, I don't believe that either. Yeah. But I give, I give, I some give, people will see that. I give it to the people that like to argue that. It's like, fine. Fine. That's God. going to be a scary moment for some people, John. I argued me this about a year ago in the gym. It's like, dude, <laughs> Romans 10, 9, 10. Yeah. Okay? Just be saved. Gosh. All right. Fine. I mean, no, I didn't say fine. I mean, I kept my sword up and was like, no, this is what I believe. But, thing, uh, I, I, you, hey, man, why don't we go get sa people saved? Why, why, why are you yelling at me about the when are we going to get raptured? Yeah, and well, yeah, don't get so angry that because you believe one thing and I believe another. We're believers. We're body of Christ together. You know, that's one thing the church people get a little crazy and mad at each other and run off. Ah, I can't believe you. Ah, yeah, you're heretic. Talk to the Jehovah Witnesses and tell them that the Trinity is real. Oh. Well, they should come read John chapter 15 and say there's a, the spirit of truth from the Father. Oh, there's the Father, there's the spirit of truth, and there's Jesus. What is that? Is that the Trinity? <gasps> right there in the name in the own words of in red. Okay, mm -hmm. I digress. Jesus, yeah. verse 19. Jesus knew that they walked, wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me? And again, a little while and you will see me? 20. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. Job. Yeah. When a yeah. woman is giving birth, mm -hmm. she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no mm -hmm. longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also... You have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Also, remember when he was raised from the dead, they will see him again. And your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. Isn't Look at that, that. Isn't this the story of Samson? Amen. Wasn't he in jail with no eyes? Yeah. You can't get any more. Everyone likes to talk about how Job had it bad. You talk about, Look at Samson. And then how did it end? The greatest ending to any story. Yeah. He saved Israel. Destroyed the council of the Philistines and went on to heaven. Yeah, I mean, come on now. That is exactly what Christ is talking about. Believe in me, and I will wipe away your tears. Amen. Look at that. It says right here, no one, verse 22 at the end, no one will take your joy from you. Yeah, you can't take my joy. You could kill everything. You could destroy all I have in the flesh. You cannot take my joy. Job never cursed. I know the man. I know Jesus. God. Yeah. Verse 23, in that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. 
So that's how you pray, right? You ask the Father in Jesus' name. And what he doesn't give you is what you need to get. <laughs> 20, <laughs> Ferrari, Jesus. Right? Some, so red Ferrari. What's, what's, that, what's the song? I give you a... Uh, how about I provide some food in the fridge for the kids? No, I want that Rolex, baby. <laughs> yeah, Rolex. twelve band, twelve bands. Some of God's greatest gifts. Oh, how about unanswered prayers? Healthcare, so your son can have better health. Care. That's good how too. About, how about uh, healing, that, baby? John, how about healing? Died. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, God's going to give you exactly what you need, even if you're asking for a Rolex. You're okay. not going to get the Rolex properly, but you're going to get something way better. How about we just pray, God, meet all my needs, you know, give me a vision, Lord, give me a, give me a, a project, give me a goal to fulfill what you want me to do. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a business. Maybe that's working somewhere. Maybe that's being a housewife. Maybe that's having whatever. Did I say housewife? Mm -hmm. I did say, I do mm -hmm. want that Ferrari, Lord. Okay. Verse 24 until now. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> You have, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. Hey, Solomon said very clearly, Brian, enjoy and appreciate the riches from the Lord. Amen. Wealth you have, the bling bling. If you got big house, you got the, if let's say you get the Ferrari, whatever. Solomon was very clear, a.k.a. Yahweh, who wrote through Solomon. God made it very clear. Be grateful. Enjoy it. But also, be, throw gas and light it, light it on fire in two seconds because it's of the wind. So yeah, that's the perfect combination of of thought. Be ready to give it away, man. Be yeah. ready to give it if you need to. So what? It's just stuff. It's just a watch. It's just gold. It's just a Ferrari. It's just a house. You know, no, I'm not going to give my family away. Those are people. It's just stuff, though. Forget it's stuff. A, I appreciate it, but it's just stuff. Yeah. What a Advice. Isn't the Bible so, about like what walk past the self help aisle of Barnes and Noble? So if you, oh, so if anybody wants to give me the Laco bar, go ahead and message me privately. Hey, you know, look, let's put it this way. I receive it now in heaven right now, Brian Nitch. They ain't lifting on bad equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Just let's be honest here. You know, it's fully fitted without. It's not. Bar. It's not a rogue beater bar. No, it's not. Like Yahweh is not gonna go to a bad equipment company. It's probably gonna be the best there is. There's no no Aleko. It's just gonna be like Yahweh. Yeah, it's gonna be all gold. Verse twenty five. Let's keep going. Though the it is the city of gold, by the way. Yeah, bar. Think about the bars being gold. Just sick. Why not? And I will drop them from overhead. Still, oh. I have said these things to John. <laughs> trouble you're gonna dial up jesus right hey i have this guy jesus in my gym yeah i have said these things to you in figures of speech the hour is coming when i will no longer speak to you in figures of speech which is parables but i will tell you plainly about the father in that day you will ask in my name and i do not say to you that i will ask the father of you on your behalf yeah but the father himself loves you wow the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. This is where the disciples are freaking out, right? His disciples said, ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now... We know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Yeah. Behold, or look, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said the, now he's talking about right when, when they take him away and they arrest him and they all scattered him. 33, you want to slam dunk the last one? So I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Mm hmm. He yeah, has. Baby. Yeah, baby. Look at that. You know, well, wait a minute. I thought the uh, Michael the angel killed the devil, you know, threw him in the fire. Exactly. You know what I mean? Michael the angel is of heaven is of god and i know jesus means way more than that but i'm just pinpointing that one specific scene there 
Yeah, that, that's uh, yeah the great the end of the great tribulation. That's right. Look, it's that's that's too. But it, there is tribulation in the world. Look, there's still sin. There's still pain. There's still suffering. There's still sorrow. There's a devil out there. He says, mm-hmm. but don't worry. I've overcome the world. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I've I've given you life. Well, that's it. That's sixteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Praise the Lord. I, argument with Jehovah Witness the other day too. And I um, yes, Amen. Complete. Now, side note here, really quick. I know we got one minute. I got a really pet peeve, and I know I like to always go back to this, but Luke 16, 22, that is not a parable. The Jehovah Witness looked at me and he goes, oh, you mean the parable? I go, why do you say that? It's not. It, you know, and in some Bibles it says parable, which is such, such blasphemy, because I looked at the Jehovah Witness and I said, in every parable, Jesus says, this is a parable. And in every single parable, he never names names. But in Luke 16, 22, that story, he names names. Yeah. Why do you think it's a parable? And of course, you didn't know how to answer it. That's a good one. Yeah, that's it, because anybody, my they told me that. They told me that. They told me that. Why is that a parable? I don't understand. <laughs> how is that a parable? He's as blunt as he could be using names and details. Well, because look, I mean, there's so much that people want to reject in the yeah. Bible. I know why it is. Go ahead. No, tell me. No, I, I think I know why. I'd love to hear. And then we got to go. I, I honestly think I know why. This might be kind of a sharp statement, and I don't want to blanket this over religions like Jehovah Witness and Mormons and stuff, but I'm going to say it. Because I think that there's a lot of people in those religions that hate the Jews. Mm. And they don't want to know, and they, they want to turn away from them going to Abraham's bosom and being saved into heaven. That is that is interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't I I can't deny that a lot mo, a lot of people hate the Jews. So they'll uh, look at the Luke story in sixteen and say, "Oh, it's just a parable." I mean, even, Testament cats they're still just in the ground. That's what they'll say. That's what they'll say to me. The Jehovah Witness they're still in the ground. What? What are you talking about, man? How how dare you? By the way, how can dare you? How about you don't press charges and I don't press charges and we just do a boxing match right now on the street. And then afterwards we can hug each other. How dare you? Sorry, I digress. I love the passion. You love hey, there's not you got to love people. I don't know how I don't know I don't understand why so many people hate other religious people or other religions or like you know what even the, even though I believe 100% that the Quran is wrong. It's a made up book by the devil. And given to whatever, some guy. I don't believe in the Hindu Bible stuff. I don't believe in the Jehovah Witnesses theories. Mormons, yeah. No, but I don't hate any of them. I love all those people. Right. Now, you come at me with a sword, that's another story. You come at me with a gun, a knife, a fist, that's another story. I don't hate those people at all. I love them, and I wish to see that their eyes are open. And if they're never open, okay, I still love you. But I'm yeah. going to defend my family and my circle to the death yeah to the pain whatever it takes but i don't hate those people and i don't know why people just hate other faiths but look at the view they have that jesus let's just use king david as an example just as one example right for jesus loved and i know he loves us all but loved 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 david mm-hmm. talks about him constantly it was mm-hmm. the last word it was almost one of the last words he said in the in the uh, revelation he said, David, I come from David. Like, the last person he named in the Bible was David. You're telling me that your Jesus that you've made up in your head, your spaghetti Jesus is going to leave David in the dirt? You're, you, G, you're saying that Jesus is going to leave David in the dirt? That's, how dare you? How dare you not even disrespect people like David and Ruth and everybody? But how dare you even think that Jesus would do such a thing? It's it's the image of Jesus that upsets me. That yeah. They don't they don't know the real Jesus. You make a valid point. He said that, right? They don't know the Father because they don't know me. He loves everyone. He came for everyone. Not for a select few. For everyone. Go read Colossians chapter 1. Everything that was made was given to Jesus, both seen and unseen. All things, all people. He's not saying, I don't like the, the, the these kind of people. Or Jesus never said, I, I don't like these kind of people. He loves them all. So guess what, John? We know him 
we love them all. And he came to rescue them all. He didn't leave a certain group of people in the dirt. No, absolutely not. Just like he does it now. No. And that is a that is not who God is. No. No, the Bible, we've read the Bible. We've combed the Bible from Genesis 1 till right now, John chapter 16. Yeah. We have never seen once where he says, oh, I don't like these people because they're these kind of people. He just judges people based on their actions, but he wants to save them all. He warns everybody, turn Mm -hmm. from your sin, wicked ways. I will rescue you. If you don't, I must judge you. The loving God. The loving, the loving, there you go. You just said it best. Amen. Well, look at that. Two chapters down as we uh, have our new date for the uh, celebration. And yeah. uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow morning. I promise I'll get up. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'm having some trouble getting up with this hard training, but I'll be up uh, 515-ish, 515-520. I'll be rocking and rolling. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Brian, you want to pray it out? I did pray it in. I'll do it. Father, we thank you so much for just, you sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Mm. Thank you. You're amazing. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. Thank you for giving us everything that we need, everything that we want, everything that you've given us. We, we receive it. You're the greatest there is. You love all people. And you came to save all people. Mm-hmm. And we, we thank you for that. What else? There's nothing else to say. You're the greatest, the loving Father. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.